Welcome to live2clays.com, best e-learning portal for IIT JE, NEET and Foundation. Hello students, in this video I will discuss how to calculate average rate of reaction and pseudo first order rate constants when at different time intervals the different concentration of the reactant is given. The problem says that in a pseudo first order hydrolysis of ester in waters, the following results are obtained. This you can see that at different time intervals, different concentration of the reactant is given. Let me write the hydrolysis reaction of uh, esters. Here we have esters CH3C double CH3 and it undergoes hydrolysis means in presence of waters. And so the products produced in this reaction are one is acid and another is alcohol. These are the products produced. Now here it says that in a pseudo, pseudo reaction is a reaction which appear to be of different order but than uh, it is in actually. For example, this is a pseudo first order reaction but if we look at this reaction there are two reactants are taking part. It means that this reaction should be of second orders but in actually it is of first orders. In such reactions, one of the reactants will be in so much small quantity that uh, will not be easily traceable. That's how uh, the reaction is of first order. Now let's move on to the first part of the questions. In the first part, the question says that calculate average rate of reaction between the time intervals 30 to 60. In this time interval, we have to calculate average rate of reaction and see here time is given in seconds time per seconds and so the concentration of the reactant is given in molarity mole per liter. Then we apply the formula for the average rate of reaction that is the change in the concentration of reactant per unit time. Here I mention rate is equal to here's esters reactant is a reactant and we know that when a chemical reaction takes place the concentration of the reactant decreases and decrease in the concentration of the reactant is re represented by the sign minus. Here I mentioned D that is the difference a change in the concentration of the reactant. Reactant is ester CH3, C double O and CH3 upon and difference in time that is DT. Now we can plug in the value here we have minus and so change this is uh, here you can see that in this time interval we have to calculate average rate of reaction then this is the initial concentration of the reactant and this is the final concentration of the reactant. We can plug in the values here we have minus bracket final concentration final concentration uh, minus initial concentration 0 0.31 and so upon difference in time this is the final time this is the initial time here we have 60 minus 30 now we can do the calculation we can subtract the top values here we have at the top uh, let me mention minus years bracket at the top we have 0 0.171 and see we subtract the value which we have 0 0.31 and the value which we get that is minus 0 0.14 minus 0 0.14 and at the bottom 60 minus 30 is equal to 30 minus minus will cancel out now we can divide 0 0.14 0 0.14 is divided by 30 this is the value we get we can write this value in scientific notation here we get 4.67 4.67 and multiplied by 10 to power minus 3 and the so unit will be concentration of the reactant is in molarity and so the unit of time is second that's why the unit is going to be molarity per second. Now in the second part the question says that calculate the pseudo first order rate constant means that we have to calculate k value for the hydrolysis of esters. Well first we calculate the rate constant at different intervals. First, we calculate uh, rate constant at the interval uh, at the time interval of 0 to 30, then 0 to 60, and 0 to 90. And at these time intervals, we will get three different rate constant value. Then we can calculate average rate constant. We can add up those all three rate constant values divided by three. That will be the pseudo first order rate constant value. Let me show you how. First, we calculate rate constant for the time interval 0 to 30. And in this case, this will be the initial concentration of the reactant and this will be the final concentration of the reactant because we are selecting time interval 0 to 30. Now, we apply the formula for the first order of reaction. The formula is K is equal to 2.303 and it is time 
and so here we have log and here we have initial concentration and so at the bottom we have final concentration since there are different time intervals that's why we label uh, the rate constant also as a different if for this time interval i select a rate constant as k1 so that value should not mix up here we have k1 is equal to 2.303 and time interval is 0 to 30 then we get time 30 30 minus 0 is equal to 30 log initial value initial concentration of the reactant that is 0 0.55 here we have 0 0.55 at the bottom the final concentration of the reactant that is 0 0.31 and here we get 0 0.31 we can do the calculation it is decimal now we can divide uh, 2.303 2.303 is divided by 30 the value which we get that is 0 0.0768 here we have 0 0.0 768 and multiplied by we can simplify this log part also first at the top we have 0 0.55 and it is divided by 0 0.31 this is the value we get and we take log value here we get 0 0.249 0 0.249 now we can multiply this value here we have 0 0.249 and it is multiplied by 0 0.0 uh, 768 768 this is the value we get we can write this value in scientific uh, notation here we get 1.91 multiplied by 10 to power minus 2 here we get 1.91 multiplied by 10 to power minus 2 this is the rate constant value for the time interval 0 to uh, 30 now we calculate uh, rate constant for the time interval 0 to 60 in this case we assume rate constant as k2 we apply the same formula here we have k2 and say 2.303 and time interval is 0 to 60 60 minus 0 is equal to here we get 60 log initial concentration is going to be same 0 0.55 and so final concentration is uh, this is going to be final concentration at 60 0 0.17 here we have 0 0.17 now we can do the calculation we divide 2.303 uh, sorry it is 2.303 and it is divided by 60 the value which we get that is 0 0.0384 0 0.0384 let me confirm this value again 0 0.0384 yes it is correct and so then we can simplify this log part also initial concentration is 0 0.55 and it is divided by final one 0 0.17 then we take log value this is the value we get 0 0.5099 0 0.5099 we can multiply these values here we have 0 0.5099 and it is multiplied by 0 0.0384 and the value which we get and we can write this value in scientific notation here we get 1.96 1.96 and multiplied by 10 to power minus 2 and in similar manner we calculate the rate constant value for the time interval 0 to 90 in this case this is going to be the final concentration and in initial concentration will be 0 0.55 here we have rate constant for 0 to 90 uh, k3 0 to 90 means time we get 90 seconds log initial concentration is 0 0.55 and final is 0 0.85 concentration 0 0.085 let me confirm it again yeah 0 0.085 now we can do the calculation here we can divide 2.303 and it is divided by 90 the value which we get that is 0 0.0256 0 0.0256 and it is multiplied by here we have 0 0.55 and it is divided by final concentration here we get 6.4 uh, let me confirm it again 0 0.055 divided by 0 0.085 6.47 its log value is 0 0.811 here we have 0 0.811 we can multiply these values 0 0.0256 
0 0.811 well this is the value we get now we can uh, write this value in scientific notation here we get 2.0 uh, c1 uh, we can write it 2.08 multiplied by 10 to power minus 2 here we have 2.08 multiplied by 10 to power minus 2 now we can uh, calculate average rate uh, rate constant value these are three different values for different time intervals we can uh, find out k value here we have k1 plus k2 plus k3 and so divided by 3 because there are three values that's why we divide by 3 k1 value is here we have 1.191 multiplied by 10 to power minus 2 k2 value is 1.96 and multiplied by 10 to power minus 2 and and k3 value is 2.8 sorry it is 2.08 and multiplied by 10 to power minus 2 and it is divided by 3 now we can add up these values and divide by 3 here we have exponents are same we can add up the values 1.91 plus 1.96 plus 2.08 this is the value we get 5.95 5.95 multiplied by 10 to powers minus 2 and it is divided by 3 we can divide this value by 3 and the value which we get that is 1.98 here we have 1.98 and multiplied by 10 to the power minus 2 it is in molarity per second molarity per second you can see that how i calculated pseudo first order rate constant value first part i applied average rate of reaction for the reactant and in the second part first i calculated rate constant for the at the different time intervals given in the table then i calculate calculated average rate constant value that is the pseudo first order rate constant for the hydrolysis of the esters thank you if you like this video please click the like button if you have any questions or suggestions please comment below for more updates on iit je or need exams please subscribe to our channel to get a lot of updates support us by following us on facebook and twitter to sharpen your skills please try out our test series on livetotalage.com Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day.